I got us a new decal. And we're back. I hope you enjoyed that meme because I know exactly how that meme makes someone feel. No, not like a billionaire drug kingpin, but frustrated and waiting for things to happen. So what had happened is the fuel pump cut out. It's this thing. Now that we're supercharged, there's more demand and it just fried itself. So I had to order a new one from Dishworks. Ordered it, showed up, led to install it, and then I hit a roadblock. These two things. These are where you use to secure your fuel pump from floating around and disconnecting itself inside your actual fuel tank, and they don't fit the pump. So right now, we are in a holding pattern, unfortunately, until these replacement parts show up. But let me show you what else I've been doing around the Miata. All right, let's see who's got a good memory. What is different on the inside here? Let's get a little bit closer. Let's keep it there. Keep it there. Yeah, we actually now have a mount for our gauges. Compared to where that go rigging up that you saw from me before, we actually now have these things solidly mounted. And the switch is not for nitrous yet. It's for a radiator fan, so don't get too excited. But I am going to challenge you. What do you think that white panel is made out of? It is custom made by... Yours truly, and remember, me out of money, so it's not gonna be anything too fancy. All right, three, two, one. It was made out of. Well, if you said laundry basket, you'd be a big old winner. So what I did is I just uh, chopped out the bottom of it because I wasn't using this for anything. Look how dirty that is. It's not for my clothes, and repurposed it inside to secure those gauges. So. Short and sweet, but otherwise, that's unfortunately where we were at. This whole issue did cause me to miss a track day. I brought out my Civic, so I'm going to show you some footage of that right now. Be jealous of my video editing skills. Kidding. This is the best I could do. On top is the Civic at the track day that we were supposed to bring the Mia to, unfortunately. But, you gotta make do with uh, what you have, so we did. If you noticed, we did start the Civic and the Miata at roughly the same time at the beginning of a lap. These are two average laps, I would say, overall with my driving skills. And you can already see, even though we're only about 20-30 seconds into the actual lap, that the Civic is putting some distance on the Miata. I mean, it, it should. It's a newer car, it's pretty track capable, has more horsepower, better brakes, better wheels, better pretty much everything. But it's, it's kind of nice to see the comparison. With that being said, to be honest, I do prefer having the Miata on track. I feel like I can push it harder. And if I do break the Miata, well, the Civic can still take me to work. So that is good. With that being said, though, there, there are definitely different abilities. They're not abilities. There's different, different characteristics about driving these two on track. For example, the Civic is much heavier, so breaking this hard into a turn is a little bit more unnerving. The Miata is lightweight, so I can just kind of huck it in there and hope and pray, and usually it works out okay. But you can already see, as we finished up this lap, that the Civic is faster, it's newer, more powerful, and it puts about 10 seconds on the Miata on average per lap. So that is very noticeable, but honestly, it's more fun to drive the Miata on track. So unfortunately, this is where we get held up until we get that piece for the fuel pump. But once we do, slap it in there. Take her out, see what she's got. What, ma'am? Males here? Oh my god. So I'm not going to bore you with the installation of the fuel pump because it's really only two screws. And I could hardly wait to go out and give this thing a rip. Of course, follow all local traffic laws. Safety first. But otherwise, in a moment here, I'm just going to let you enjoy the sounds of my supercharged Miata. Enjoy.
pretty good rip, you know? Love hearing that sound. So next up, I needed to record the AFRs to make sure my engine wasn't gonna melt itself. So don't mind the lower position here. That blue dial needs to stay under 15 under acceleration and then the boost gauge is there. So you can see that I'm not just making squishy sounds with my mouth. After this, on the 0 to 60 because really that's oh my god oh and here's what it was back in 1990 we got 13.9 and they got 19 not even 19 they got 9.5 we're so slow why won't you let me love you i try to get you a supercharger you break down leave me inside the highway I put new coil orbs on you. You say I make this squealing sound. I actually put a supercharger inside you. And now you're even slower. Alright, so the game plan here is to figure out what I did wrong. So honestly, it's all on me. I don't know what I did, but I will figure it out. So the first step for diagnostics, get your tools. So I hit up my favorite store in the world, Harbor Freight with a coupon of course, and I picked up two things. The one on the left is a compression test kit. That is to figure out if we are in a complete worst case scenario with a bad head. The one on the right is a cool laser gun, and that'll let us know if I screwed up the timing. I'll show you how to do both of them right now. So the first step for a compression test is to warm the engine up to an operating temperature. So take your time, waste some gas, Make sure that you're not containing your exhaust fumes internally, so make sure you have airflow, and then proceed once the engine is warmed up. Once your engine is warmed up, turn it off, and then you're going to go ahead and pull the fuses related to your fuel system. So we're going to pull our fuel injector relay, as well as the actual fuse for the injectors themselves. Place them somewhere, you won't lose them. Fuses are removed and secured on the windshield collar over there. Next up, you're going to have to pop off your spark plug wires and then take the actual spark plugs out. So installing the actual compression gauge is pretty easy. You're going to take your rubber hose, put it into whatever cylinder you are testing. It doesn't have to be locked down there and super tight, just enough where you know it's not going to blow itself out of the cylinder when you are turning the car over so that's in there pretty good now and then take the compression gauge which I don't know where I put it and attach that on top. Found it. Then take your compression gauge and lock it down. Hold the accelerator fully open, turn your car over for a couple seconds, turn it off, go read your numbers, repeat on each cylinder. Well I thought this was going to be easy, but part of our new tool decided to deposit itself down there, so I have to figure out a way to get it out without damaging the head. So every single test ran about 135 PSI, regardless if I opened the throttle or not. It's good for consistency, bad for pressure, but makes me think something's up with the actual throttle body, which could be explaining why we have a lack of power. So I'm going to investigate that further, and I'll let you know. So we're idling again because I'm trying to get us back up to the operating temperature because if it's not failing the compression test, the next thought about why we're losing the power when we're in boost is because of timing. So follow along here. We got a fan blowing out. Ooh, that looks cool. It's going a lot faster than that. But I have our timing gun set up and it should be at about 10 degrees top dead center. And it gives a strobe effect, and I don't know if you can see it in there. But if you look, 
we're not even close to 10 o'clock, but we're like 6. So I think that might be why we don't have the power we need for her or deserve. So I'm going to fix that. So what we're looking at here is the Flying Miata Gearing Calculator. You're welcome, I'm Captain Obvious. What this lets you do is calculate a speed that you want the car to be at and putting in other factors like your tire size, so bigger is better in this case, the transmission, the type of differential you have. It's gonna tell you what RPM you need to be at and in what gear to get to a certain speed. So for us to get to 60, we want to be in second gear at 7100 RPM.